Hello, my name is Victor Pons. Uh, I too am interested in progression electronics, and I too uh, went to school with Zach Hale in my undergrad in Preston BB. Um, and as Stuart Saunders Smith said uh, about the Salmar, I'm currently uh, at U of I Urbana Champaign, where Salmar Triano did that Salmar construction. And I have actually played on that, which is quite a bit of fun. Um, transition over here. Great. Let me fix this real quick. It's odd. There we go. Um, so if you were able to download the iBook, this whole presentation is in an iBook format with way more detail and linkable content than you're going to ever want. Um, I'm going to try to go through some of the basics uh, and let you guys do that exploring. I'll leave the iBook on the website for the conference so you can download that uh, to your iPhone, iPad, MacBook. And there's also a PDF uh, with not as much interactive content that you can download um, for other devices. So this is a little bit about the first work. Um, I'm using a Kinect video controller here, which senses my movement. And this is a collaboration between uh, Mike Junokas, who is at the National Center for Supercomputing Applications at University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign. His team has been working uh, on this interface and tracking gesture and incorporating that into performance. So when I was uh, when I accepted the invite to come here, I really wanted to try to demo this real quick. So we're doing some just basic control, some pitch bending. My left hand is pitch bending down, and my right hand is pitch bending up. Um, and then there's also, uh, I can grab buffers. If my hand is above my head, it'll start recording and playing back buffers. So just some basic control uh, and some basic processing techniques, but we're trying to explore some not so common ways of controlling, similar to ways Zach is interfacing with the spectra surface. Uh, we're also working on some more complex applications, some uh, artificial intelligence where the computer then learns your gestures and uh, creates a piece in real time. So uh, you can read more about that. The film is by a friend of mine, Dan Boomgarten, who does experimental films. Uh, and that one happened to be the perfect length for this uh, short improv to showcase the electronics. So I decided to include that. So moving on. So the most important thing when we're dealing with electronics uh, from a performance aspect uh, is understanding two categories which electroacoustic works fall in. And then once you understand that, then you can then cater your hardware and your setup to be really efficient uh, in making programs of all uh, electroacoustic music or incorporating your program within a mixed uh, program. Uh, electroacoustic setups are similar to multi-progression setups where you may not have a prescribed diagram of how things are supposed to go. Uh, and there, some setups are better than others, and there's not always one way to do it. But with all the technology, it's really great to have a uh, foundation and a, a, a setup that you can then expand upon or not utilize everything in it without having to run into too many errors. So fixed uh, media and live electronics uh, are two points or two categories that get often confused. So a lot of times, I'll play works that say, this piece is for live electronics, and it's not. It's a tape piece, uh, which is great. But live electronics deal with live processing. And I think that's a misconception uh, with a lot of folks, uh, just like Tam Tam and Gong gets mixed up in many parts. Um, live electronics implies that there's live processing. Because you can't have another way of doing a tape piece. It can't not be live. You play tape piece, it's live. So tape pieces and live electronics. Now, the big deal with this for setup is when we have live electronics, we want to make sure that we balance two things, the process sound that's getting sent to the house and the acoustic sound. And this gets overlooked a lot. Uh, for Zach's piece, they're interested in the, with the spectra surface in the process sound only. So that's what he was talking about, only process. But when you're balancing like vibraphone in most pieces or uh, e it doesn't have to be a melodic instrument. It's good to have a nice balance between those and to be able to understand how to send that to the house. So that takes us to the next 
uh, way of finding out if your piece is live or fixed, and that goes to scores. So on the left is Pierre Jodolowsky's Time and Money, uh, and this piece is a tape piece, but it's a more complex tape piece. Uh, you have cues in the part that tell you where you're at, but there's no advancing the patch. So it's fixed in the sense where uh, you don't have too much artistic freedom to phrase things, but it, it keeps you confined. It's like playing with a click track. With live electronics, this is uh, Court Lippi's uh, duo for Cojon and Computer, uh, we have many ad patch advancements, and it gives you a little more artistic freedom with pacing, which is not always good or bad. It depends on... Uh, uh, it, it, your artistic choices, but it, it's, it gives you a little bit of more freedom. So you'll see these patch cues. So patch cues, I'll get into later, uh, we really have to worry about MIDI pedals and talking to the computer, but for the next example, we're going to move to gear, and the first thing is your audio interface, which is the most important piece of your hardware when uh, realizing electric acoustic works. Uh, audio interface is much like a sound card in a computer, except it's external and it has way more inputs and outputs and, and preamps and other nice things that your computer sound card is not going to have. Uh, and it's really important to understand this. I know a lot of uh, colleagues and, and friends that will buy an interface and they don't spend too much time uh, working around this and their errors and their, and their performance are simple routing issues that can be solved uh, with a basic understanding of your interface and the software that goes with your interface, uh, which I'll talk about in a little bit uh, how valuable that can be. So, Again, there's tons of information here. Uh, a great tip is when you do have an interface and you have everything working, when that next OS update comes out, don't, don't download that yet. Wait, because uh, a lot of these drivers will have to catch up uh, and you'll run into big problems. I know people have had big performances. They updated to whatever the current OS is and nothing works. So heads up on that. Uh, microphones, it's good to have a nice basic knowledge of the two categories. We have you know, dynamic and condenser mics. If you are doing this your own and you, you know, you're showing up to a venue with your own gear, it's important to understand a little bit about what mics might suit your application for your instrument. So I'll let you guys dive into that since we're uh, short on time. Uh, this is also important too, how you place the microphones. In general, some people I see well a lot, we use this XY configuration. They'll take two condensers, put them in an XY like this, and put that in front of something. That's good, but I encourage you to try to try this uh, spatial or stereo spacing mic like we have here. This is a really, really much more effective technique, especially on a vibraphone or a marimba. You can get much more of a sonic image uh, uh, panned and wider sound than the XY. The XY is great for like maybe a, a snare drum and a small instrument or a small setup, but if you do have an XY, it's not the end of the world. But if you can, request or set up a, uh, uh, your stereo spaced mics. Okay, so for computers and software, this is, you, you wanna make sure that you have a, a machine with these basic requirements. This is not, this is a little more technical than we probably need to get today, but uh, it's important to, uh, these common software applications over here, Max MSP, Pure Data, Super Collider, Grace, Ableton, they kinda go in order, in, uh, like Grace and maybe Super Collider, not the first ones you wanna start with. Max, Pure Data, Logic, um, Ableton, these are uh, DAWs or digital audio workstations that you're gonna wanna learn or know how to open and close and work your basic ways around. Uh, these are common applications that composers are writing with today and you're gonna find many pieces are not always in the same uh, software. So it's good to kinda know your way in and out of this uh, basic uh, operating systems. Uh, okay, so MIDI pedals, probably one of the most important and um, misunderstood things. So a MIDI pedal is super important. Uh, whether you're playing a tape piece or a live electronic piece, uh, when I started doing all programs of percussion electronics, the one thing I wanted to eliminate was this uh, clear image of technology everywhere, and it's really difficult, and you know, you gotta wait a bunch and things, and then you walk out, you've got these giant headphones on, and then you're like, all right, we're ready to go, and then somebody triggers the piece. That's great if you don't have, if you have to show up to a place and you don't have your gear, there's ways to make the performance practice more normal, what we're used to. So you walk out on stage, you can start the piece on your own, you can adjust things, you can do this by yourself. And it allows you to realize electric acoustic works in spaces that maybe traditionally wouldn't be able to. So I would play in a small art gallery and I would bring the small PA and I would uh, set up all this and I would still be able to make a performance happen. Uh, and 
you know, obviously being in a great facility with great sound guys uh, and, and girls <laughs> is a great thing, uh, but it shouldn't hinder you from only doing performances in those aspects, in those situations. So, uh, a, again, uh, well, I'll talk about other techniques to help you do that a little bit better. Here's a little bit about PA systems. If you are uh, working with PA systems or are going to purchase one, it's good to understand the difference between passive and active. So I'll let you read about that so you make the right purchase. And lastly, uh, monitors are another. Monitors and MIDI pedals are probably the two uh, other important pieces of hardware, aside from your interface and your computer, uh, that you should uh, own. So I use in-ear monitors, which I think uh, are probably the best uh, situation for what we're doing. You can use earbuds, like iPhone earbuds, and those kind of things. The problem with, and, and cans, the problem with those is they don't give you quite the isolation that in-ear monitors do. And what's great about that is I can save my mix. I can say, I want this much of click, I want this much of vibraphone, I want this much of process sound. And I can save that, and I have a sterile uh, mix always. There's no, no problems. And that's a great, great thing to have. Because if people, how many people here have played pieces with live electronics or electronics? OK, so getting your ear mix is, or, or your monitor mix is always, it's always a pain. Uh, and wedge monitors you don't want to use, especially if you're doing pieces of the click. <laughs> you don't, you don't want to hear that. And wedge monitors can be just, it's too noisy here. It's not as uh, comfortable. You want to be comfortable, and that's the most important thing when trying to realize these works. You shouldn't feel like you're really uncomfortable the whole time. So there's all this gear available. Um, so if you can't have uh, in-ear uh, in custom fit monitors, then I would go with earbuds. So, uh, all right. Okay, so some, some basic performance tips. I kind of touched on some of this a little bit already. Um, so iPads are really, really, really handy. So if you have an iPad sitting around, for me, uh, my wife had purchased an iPad years ago, and it kind of sat around the house, and I thought it was just a big iPhone, and I wasn't very interested in it. And then uh, the Logic Remote came out, and, uh, and then I bought this Presonus 1818 VSL, and they have a wonderful iPad uh, mixer interface app. And then I realized iPads are awesome, and I started buying some used iPads on Craigslist because they're cheaper than buying hardware. So your iPad, um, I'll show you here. So for this next piece, the last piece I'll play, uh, I have here my interface's mixer. So what I can do with this is I can give this, so talking about performing in our galleries, I can give this to a colleague and say, here is the uh, acoustic sound of my instrument, and here is the process sound of my instrument. And they can figure that, the basics out of that. Any, with, any person with a basic uh, musical ear can figure that out. So this is wireless. It'll work in pretty much most halls. What I'm using for my setup is I'm using an old wireless router that's in this box here. So you can set up an ad hoc network if you guys know how to do that, or you can use Wi-Fi in a school, which is not very really good because they usually filter that stuff out. But this, having your own dedicated router, is a really, really important thing because you fire up your interface and everything connects to it and nothing's going to happen as long as the interface has power. Uh, and this will work, you know, I could sure it would work in the music building across there. You know, it's, it, it's, you're limited to the range of uh, your, um, your Wi-Fi router. So pick up an old router, it's a really good thing, or if you have one sitting around in your house in a box, get that and use that and make that in, uh, as part of your setup. It's a really, really valuable tool. Um, other things, learn how to wrap cables. But it's really nice to make friends with, with your sound crew. Um, <laughs> or, yes, uh, or uh, when you buy gear, you want to take care of your gear, right? You put your instruments in cases and that kind of stuff. Sound cables can be really fragile. If you do the, you know, power, the garden electric cable hose or whatever thing, that's just going to destroy your cables. So there's a nice video here to learn how to wrap cables that you can click on uh, later and watch. So it's, it's really good to, to know how to interact with your sound crew when you do have a sound crew efficiently. So sending them nice mixes, learning how to use your interfaces. Uh, uh, app, uh, this, this application will also save presets. So I will save an aux mix for every one of my pieces. So I, I'll show you when I, if I can switch this over. The video is being a little funny. But what I can do is I can pull this up, Let me move this over. I can pull this over, and we'll get it to size. And over here, oh, you can't see. Over here on the side, um, OK, come on. 
Well, over here on the side, sorry, I didn't want to waste any more time. Over here on the side are presets for a bunch of pieces. Um, and at the top are the pieces that are most prominent. And what I can do is make a set list. If I'm playing Five Works for Vibraphone Electronics, I make a set list. I drag that item over, just click on it and drag it over to the mixer. Everything changes. All my output reassignments happen, all my inputs, all my levels. It's a super, super valuable tool. So you can go home, get everything perfect, show up, and you don't have to turn knobs and do anything. It really, really helps with smoothing out a performance. So uh, like I said, Learning your interfaces uh, software is super, super, super valuable. All right, uh, I'm going to end with a short performance. Um, and I will pull up the information about that now, and then transition, and I'll take questions.
So that piece was by my good friend, and he's going to forgive me for my poor French, uh, Laurent de Rupt. Um, I've been working with him for the past few years. He's a percussion trio with electronics that I've done in a few solo works. And I asked him, hey, I'm looking for something really short, because um, I don't have a lot of time to talk, and I want to play a whole piece. And he wrote this intro for a, a chamber piece that's going to be premiered in two weeks in Paris. And this is the intro for that chamber piece. It's two percussionists. Um, um, I think it's clarinet uh, and it's a real, and trumpet. It's a small chamber ensemble. And um, this work uses some turntable process sound. It's all tape. Uh, it's a, so I have your live electronics piece and your tape piece. So I'm sure we're out of time, So and we are. So if there's questions, I'll take questions. Yes? I just wanted to say that uh, in this uh, division of two categories, it's the uh, live electronics. I think um, there's, there's a lot of other possibilities, too, that those two categories include. For example, um, live electronics without sound quality. Yes. Yes. So, of, of course, yeah, I, I totally agree. Yeah, there are, I'm trying to give you two broad, very broad categories. There are many more possibilities with that, like electric guitar is live electronics, you know, it's, so I, doing some processing there uh, or even amplification is, falls into those categories. So yes. Any other questions? Or spatialization of that clean sound too, that would be live electronics, so. Okay. All right, well, I, if you guys uh, are looking to realize works with electronics, I hope you check out the information I, uh, on that iBook. Uh, there's tons of linkable content, and hopefully that'll help you from having a disaster or any uh, easily avoidable th uh, problems uh, with tech when you are realizing your next electroacoustic work. Oh, question. Uh, yeah, if you go to vicpons.com, vicpons.com, though on my homepage, I just put click for iBook. It's like you can't miss it. And I'll keep it up for the weekend, and then it's gone. So, and it's a the handout that I use for more the basic, like going to studios that maybe don't have a lot of electroacoustic uh, works happening there. And I use that as a basic tool. But I can also kind of expand upon the iPad stuff, the more complex MIDI stuff, uh, vo continuous controllers like the volume pedal is using that kind of stuff. So, but it's all there. Any other questions? Thank you, and thank you, Ayun, and thank you to the whole panel.